if I think back to when I went to university, I, I can't really remember all the things I learned in those first few lectures, but I really can remember how I felt and how anxious I was and how exciting the ideas were. This paper looks at emotional well-being in a cohort of new students and looks at the relationships between emotional well-being and learning. My name is Susan Giertes and I work at the University of Auckland in New Zealand. Yeah. There's quite a good literature that documents differences between first year students and other comparison cohorts in the levels of anxiety they report and the feelings of depression they have. But this literature hasn't really explored in depth the positive side of well-being, the enthusiasm or the contentment that people feel. War has a model of emotional well-being that captures both the positive and the negative aspects of well-being and captures emotions in their activated and deactivated form. He proposes that by only by measuring along these four different dimensions can you capture an individual's emotional well-being profile. We took a cohort of about 130 students in their first semester with our university and assessed their well-being right at the beginning of the first semester, in the middle of the first semester, and at the end of the first semester. And at the end of the semester, we also assessed how they went about learning, what they felt about learning and being at university, and what grade they got, how well they were doing. And what we found was emotional well-being is strongly predictive of how proactive people are, whether they learn independently their feelings of belongings and their performance. And you might think, well, that's not so interesting. If you come to university and you do well, you're going to feel quite positive and your well, emotional well-being profile will change. And so good marks and positive feelings will go together. And similarly, if you come to university and you don't make friends or you don't do really well, then you won't learn in the same way and feel in the same way. And you we won't do as well, so maybe prediction of causality is, is incorrect here. But what's more interesting perhaps is that we found that emotional well-being right at the beginning of semester, before students have got to know each other or us, and certainly before they'd ever had any feedback on their performance, emotional well-being at the beginning of the semester was strongly predictive of all these aspects of learning, affect and performance at the end of semester. This has some important implications. It's telling us that we need to regard emotional well-being as a cause of some really quite important learning related outcomes and not perhaps so much as a consequence or as being inevitably tied up in a reciprocal relationship Practically, it has some implications. Perhaps we should be emphasizing much more the importance of positive emotions in our teaching. Perhaps we should be making sure that we induct students into our universities better. Maybe it has implications for the way we recruit students and advise them on their choices. If you look at the paper, you'll see that each of these dimensions of emotional well-being has a unique relationship with these various outcome measures. And it's all quite interesting. So I hope you enjoyed the read. Thank you.